And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here to race number 19 of Season 7 of the NCAA Mobile One Cup Series. The chase for the championship is looming on the horizon, and these drivers, you can feel it on pit road. You can cut the tension with a knife. It is so thick down there. These drivers know that these next few races, these next two races here at Pocono and next week at Kansas, are going to be the deciding factor into whether they're going to be battling it out for the Mobile Cup Series championship this season or not. Getting ready here today for the running of the Cove Haven Resort 350. Today we are getting ready for what's going to be a 20 lap event and as we saw in the truck series race these drivers can make it possibly on one stop but more than likely two so pit strategy will come into play into today's race you can bet on it. Ian Dutta starts on the pole position there as uh, he's going to be Trying to pick up his first Mobile and Cup Series win of the season. He's a two-time winner over in Snickers Cup, but has yet to go to Victory Lane here for Junior Motorsports. Alongside of him, another driver trying to get to Victory Lane this season in Mobile and Cup Series competition. And that is Jessica Shelton in the three machine for Michael Norman Motorsports. Another driver. Actually, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the entire top five have not been to Victory Lane yet this season. Sean Henley for Tweenix Racing. He's lining up in third place. Henley comes into this race currently in 35th in points, so he's relying on wins. Ian Dutta and Jessica Shelton each come into this race 26th and 30th in points, too. So you could tell those drivers really looking for wins here today, and that's probably why they try to put together a good qualifying lap to start up at the front. Madison Sieber starts off fourth place. Sieber comes into this race eighth in the point standings, trying to stay inside the top 10, but doesn't have a win yet this season. And the same can be said for Cassandra Renzi. The current rookie points leader, she doesn't have a win yet this season either, but she is fifth in overall standings right now. Drew Austin, two-time winner this season. He is lining up in the sixth position today, trying to pick up a third win. If that's the case, there's no doubt about it. Drew Austin will be battling for the Mobile Cup Series Championship because he'd be the only three-time winner, and there's no way somebody would be able to take away wildcard spot number one from him. But I think it's time to get these cars rolling off, and we can talk a bit about the point situation coming into today's race. Sean Galligan today could automatically clinch himself a spot in this season's chase regardless of where he finishes next week at Kansas because the gap between himself and 10th place is 110 points. That is how far away Sean Galligan has been able to get with his consistent runs and a couple of wins along the way. Same could possibly be said for Luke Walker and Zach Rogers. The two of them are second and third in points. Now Luke comes in 58 points ahead of 10th place in points. And Zach Rogers comes in 40 points ahead of 10th place in points. So those three, Galligan, Walker, and Rogers, if they can come away with top 10 runs here today, they could automatically clinch themselves spots in this season's Mobile and Cup Series chase for the championship. We aren't basically now talking about the battle for the points lead because we know for a fact Sean Galligan's basically going to be able to keep it heading into the chase. But those three, the two, the 64, and the 33, could lock themselves up spots in this season's chase. The drivers that still have mathematically not yet made it into a chase position include fourth in points Austin LaPlante, Cassandra Renzi, Bob Jones, Chris Washer, Madison Siever, James Silverfox, and James Qualls. That's the top 10 in points. Only three points out of 10th place is Dylan Schwallenberg. He's 11th in points. Cody Lamas is 13 points out. He's 12th. Josh McCollard and Kyle Corbett, they are 14 points out. And Joshua Michaels, 15th in the standings, is a total of 27 points out of the 10th position in the stands. So we'll keep an eye on that battle to get inside the top 10 in points during the course of this day. And other Jessica Shelton, a couple of Chevrolets ready to put us under the green flag as the pace car is ready to peel off fuel window for these drivers I believe is somewhere around 12 to 14 laps if a caution comes out though they may try and short pit and make it the rest of the way green flags waving here though in the Cove Haven Resort 350 at Pocono a couple of drivers already spreading it out three wide Mason Wood and Charles Jackson now James Qual is going to move down there as well as Ian Dutta very quickly going to get away Sean Henley moves now into second Cassandra Renzi now underneath of Jessica Shelton. That is for third. Ian Dutta's teammate, George Roke, went to victory lane for Junior Motorsports a couple of weeks ago at Champs-Élysées. Ian Dutta was the runner-up driver in that event. Dutta, though, wants to go to victory lane on his own, and the caution flag is out already. That didn't take long at all, and I can't tell who it involved because it spread everybody out. Shelton now moves into second. 
as she was able to get around Henley. Henley back to third. Zach Rogers trying to clinch himself as chase spot. He is now in the fourth position. And they're going to come down here to our first yellow of the day. From Chris Washer on back to Ralph Mason, there's a bit of a gap that might have been where the trouble br was brewing. And Austin the Plant, fourth in the point stands. The defending champ is involved in whatever this was. Dylan Young is also way back here. And there's the points leader, Sean Galligan, back here as well. I don't know if he was involved or if he just was running here at the back of the pack. Whatever the case, it's not exactly where the 64 wants to be running if he wants to lock up a chase spot. The only driver who really looks like he's got any kind of damage is Austin the Plant. We may have gotten away with something here. Don't know for certain, but we're going to find out now in just a minute. Austin the Plant, former winner this season. Same for Dylan Young. Those two look like they may have been the reason the caution came out. Let's take a look at the replay. Ian Dutta leads us under our first yellow. Well, I tried looking at several camera angles, and the best camera angle to be able to see just exactly what happened is from the helicopter view, because Austin the Plant was running back in the 36th position due to his poor qualifying start. Up ahead, somebody gets into somebody. I don't know who that is. Oh, I think that's Anthony McCurry. We're going to have to look further up ahead. I think McCurry got spun around. And then these guys back here, as that was going on, they just kind of weren't able to slow down. James McLeod gets into Dylan Young, who then gets into Austin the Plant. So that was a follow-up wreck there. Let's jump to the 61 of McCurry, because I'm pretty certain that was the car that actually got turned around. But as you can see, he was able to turn it the correct way and continue on. Oh, wow. Yeah, Chris Washer's going to get into Mason Wood. Wood then comes up, gets into Washer. Washer's going to clip Ralph Mason. Then Mason Wood's going to clip Mason, and there you go. He's going to then get into his teammate from the Snickers Cup Series, Anthony McCurry. McCurry, who picked up the Snickers Cup Series win last week at Charlotte in the Coke 600. Not exactly the start he wanted here to this race, but the fortunate thing for him was everybody behind him was conscientious enough to get on the brakes or be able to split him. Joshua Michaels, Tanner Sullivan, Daniel Day, they all do a great job of not running into the back of that Audi. And Anthony McCurry was able to continue. And then we had, of course, that little follow-up wreck involving McLeod, LaPlante, and uh, Dylan Young back there. But we actually really did get away with something here. That was up in the 12th position where Anthony McCurry started. Remember in the Truck Series race yesterday, second or, uh, the pole sitter, Leia Walker, spun out in front of the field. We only had about three drivers involved in that. So these drivers doing a great job of wreck avoidance here this weekend here at Charlotte. But a tough break there for Anthony McCurry. He'll lose some valuable track position and then don't know how bad the damage is on the rear of the six machine of Austin the Plant. But we'll find out in just a moment now as we head back now for the restart. Well... It happened early on here. Pit strategy came into play. A number of drivers decided not to come down pit road with the leader Ian Dutta and several others. This is the way they'll restart here. Zach Rogers is going to be the leader. James Qualls in second. Kyle Matthews third. Luke Walker now up to fourth. Chris Washer is in fifth. Wolfgang Mason sixth. Seventh, Andy Tim as Dylan Schwallenberg runs in eighth. Ninth is Kyle Corbett. And in tenth is going to be Cody Lamas. Then you got Tanner Sullivan in 11th. Twelfth, Daniel Day. And Jake Rogers in 13th. Those drivers did not pit. Ian Dutta, who did pit, will restart 14th. Jessica Shelton back in 15th. Sean Henley 16th. Rest of the top 20 are Drew Austin, Bob Jones, Madison Sieber, and Dylan Poteet. Jacob Lawler 21st, 22nd. Lyndon Wright, Cassandra Renzi 23rd. Mason Woods 24th with Trent Dunham 25th. Zach Campbell 26th, 27th. Joshua Collard. Then it's going to be J uh, James Silverfox, Charles Samper, and Ralph Mason, the top 30. Head back up here to the front and the current leader, Zach Rogers. Nobody out of the race, I don't think, after this incident. Let's see for certain. Nope, everybody's been able to continue, including Austin Plant and Dylan Young. Anthony McCurry, he's way at the tail end of the field after he had to come down and have a rather extended stay on pit road, but maybe able to work his way up here to the front again. You never know. That was one thing I noticed in the Truck Series race. A lot of drivers that I didn't talk about the first half of the race, all of a sudden were up there during the second half of the race, and a big, I think a big reason for that, it could have been attributed to that long green flag run we had and that green flag pit stop we had with about, I think it was like uh, seven laps to go or something like that. Right now, though, Zach Rogers very much in command, former winner this season, trying to pick up his second win of the season, and as we said, he could today clinch himself a spot in the Mobile Cup Series chase for the championship if he can come away with a decent finish of a top five or a top ten. Right now, he's trying to do better than that and pick up his second win of the season, which would be an icer. There would be no doubt about it. He would be in the chase 
for the championship. Right behind him, James Qualls, former winner this season. It's been a great season for him, even though he didn't take the green flag to start the season off at Daytona. Right now, doing very well in that number 15 machine. He comes into this race 10th in the point standings, though. So he's got to get himself back on track, get some good finishes, get himself up inside the top 10 so he doesn't have to worry about the potentiality of falling outside the top 10 and missing this chase for the championship. Wolfgang Mason, this is the most we've seen out of him since he won the All-Star race this season. Up there right now in the third position and now trying to go to the inside of the James Qualls machine. Now we know that Wolfgang Mason's very familiar with open wheel racing and they do some open wheel racing here at Pocono so not much of a surprise when you think about that to see Wolfgang doing well here today and how about right here Andy Timmons the 25 car now Matthew Daly who's uh, one of uh, Cole Daly's drivers finished very well in the truck series race yesterday due to some fuel strategy looks like his other driver Andy Tim is trying to do the same thing here today and right now looking very strong in that number 25 machine trying to go to victory lane for the second time this season he went to victory lane earlier on this season at the Milwaukee Mile there's Luke Walker that's another of the drivers who could clinch himself a spot in the chase here with a good run today currently in the sixth position both he and Zach Rogers having the same idea of rolling the dice getting track position to get ahead of what could possibly be another caution and making their way into this season's chase for the championship regardless of where they finish next week at Kansas. There is Dylan Schwallenberg. Now Schwallenberg has actually been up inside the top 10 in points for a majority of this season. He's had a really good season here in that 18 machine. He comes into this race now outside of the top 10 in points. He's 11th in the stand. He's trying to work his way back into the top 10. Right now he's in the 7th position as I said looking to try and make the chase if he gets out of the top 10 here, then he just needs a good run next week at Kansas. And you'll see that 18 car battling it out for the championship. There's Daniel Day right behind him. Now, Daniel comes into this race currently 32nd in the points stands. But he was a former winner of the season. I think he won back at Auto Club. So if he can pick up his second win, he could possibly be in the second wild card position spot behind Drew Austin. Drew Austin right now is the only two-time winner outside the top 10 in points. The other two-time winner, Sean Galligan we know will probably make the chase for the championship anyway, so that would leave the wild card spot number two open to either the driver running highest in the points that has one win or the second highest driver with two wins, which could be Daniel Day, but it could very well be this guy right here trying to take away the seventh position from Luke Walker. Cody Lamas currently comes into this race running in the 12th position in points. Former winner this season, won back at Las Vegas when he ended up... Uh, Picking up Kyle Busch Motorsports' second straight victory then. But he hasn't been to victory lane since then. And Cody's been kind of flitting in and inside and outside of the top 10 in points. Really needs a good solid run here today to get himself in contention to maybe make the chase for the championship here. We already know that maybe, just maybe, via wild card spot, the uh, Drew Austin machine's going to make it. So it'd be really great for Kyle Busch Motorsports if both their drivers made it as Zach Rogers is going to have to come to pit road. Now all those drivers who decided not to pit under that one caution we've had now having to pit here on lap 10. Qualls, Rogers, Corbett, Lamas, Timmons, Matthews, Walker, Schwallenberg, and Chris Washer. So that's going to turn the lead over. I believe the Wolfgang Mason who's decided to stay out an extra lap. Now he has to come to pit road at some point here, probably this next lap, because he was another of those drivers who decided to stay out under that caution flag. Daniel Day, I think the same can be said for him. I think the lead would then cycle over to Jessica Shelton running now in the third position. She was able to bypass Ian Dutta under this green flag run. See if the 82 backs off the throttle coming off this corner. Yep, he's coming to pit road. Here comes Daniel Day. There's your new leader, the Coors Light Chevrolet of Jessica Shelton out in front. Ian Dutta right behind her. Then a battle for the uh, third position between Sean Henley, Zach Campbell, and Henley's teammate, Dylan Poteet, right back there as well in the fifth position. So now here's the question. These drivers all came to pit road now that we're looking at. They came to pit road back on lap, I believe it was lap, uh, three. I think that's when they pitted. Lap two or three. Those other drivers that just pitted, they made it 10 laps, 10 to 11 laps on fuel. So are these drivers going to have to pit in the next three or four laps? That's the question. If that's the case, that could help those drivers that had to pit here 
under that green flag run to get back up here into the positions they were in. Now if they get a caution flag, that's going to cause problems. As it looks like, a couple of the leaders are actually coming down pit road. Lyndon Wright, Madison Sieber, Bob Jones, Harrison Langford. Yeah, these are drivers who pitted back under that first caution. They're coming down pit road now, which means... Jessica Shelton, Ian Dutta, and all those drivers up there in the top five, they're going to have to make pit stops at some point here before this race is over. Collard is in, Michaels, Mason, Cassandra Renzi, the rookie points leader. I saw Jake Rogers in, Ty, uh, uh, Henry Nova is in, there's McLeod, Levi McIntyre, Dylan Young, George Roke also in on pit road. Let's find the three of Jessica Shelton. There she is. Are they going to have to come in this time, or can they make it a couple more laps? Looks like Shelton's committing. She's coming. So is Ian Dutta. Here comes Campbell. Henley right behind her. Poteet, Austin, Silver Fox, Wood. Lawler is coming in. Can't tell who that car is right behind him. Oh, I think that's Sanford. Galligan is in, the points leader. Also Trent Dunham, Anthony McCurry, and Austin LaPlante. They are all in, making pit stops here on lap 14. Everybody will be able to make it now the rest of the way on fuel. This is what we call the money stop. They won't have to pit after this. And they are all going for four tires and fuel. Sanford, Galligan, LaPlante, they're already done with their pit service. Of course, they ended up having earlier pit stalls than everybody else. Dylan Poteet's service is done. He's coming down here. Oh, Shelton's going to try and beat Campbell off of pit road. Campbell gave her a run for her money, but I think she just barely beat him out. Wow. And Ian Dutt, a very slow stop for the 88. And looky here. Here comes Wolfgang Mason, Zach Rogers, and company. Those drivers are now back on the lead lap. But I think Shelton's going to get out ahead of all of them. Can she get up to speed? I think she can. So Jessica Shelton is going to roll around as the leader. Wolfgang Mason second. But look at Mason. Big run here into that corner. Man, he really drove it hard in there. And he's going to go by Jessica Shelton for the lead just like that. So now Wolfgang Mason's the leader. Zach Rogers going to take second. Shelton back to third. Cody Lamas will be fourth. Fifth, Zach Campbell. Sixth will be Sieber. Seventh will be Qualls. Daniel Day in eighth. Ninth now under contest. Tanner Sullivan and Lyndon Wright battling for that position. Well, this has certainly shuffled the field up, no doubt about that. Six laps to go here at Pocono under a long green flag run, and Wolfgang Mason, after the cycle of green flag pit stops, he is now the leader. Jessica Shelton lost another spot. Cody Lamas able to get around her. That may be one thing about the, uh, the newer tires, not as much of an opportunity to be able to get grip until the tires wear down just a little bit. Wolfgang Mason, Zach Rogers, and Cody Lamas, who had pitted a couple of laps before Jessica Shelton had, had a, a little bit more worn tires and probably were able to get a little bit better grip in the corners. And now Zach Rogers gets a run here into turn three. He's going to clear Wolfgang Mason. Man, these drivers doing a good job pulling their cars through the center of turn three on that inside line to be able to get by the driver they're trying to pass. And that was a battle on back there for the fourth position. Madison Sieber trying to take that away from Jessica Shelton. Meanwhile, Cody Lamas underneath the Wolfgang Mason. That's for second. And Cody will clear Wolfgang. Right now, three cars up here at the front. All three have been to victory lane this season. Two in points events, one in a non-point event. Rogers won a race this season. Cody Lamas won a race this season. And Wolfgang Mason won the Mobile Cup Series All-Star Race. All three of them would love to be able to make this season's chase for the championship. Rogers, if he wins, he'd automatically clinch himself a spot in the chase, I'm pretty sure. Cody Lamas, if he wins, he could be potentially in a wild card position. Plus, he'd also probably move inside the top ten in points anyway. And right behind him, Wolfgang Mason hasn't been to victory lane yet this season. But if he could win here, that could move him up into a potential wild card spot. Right now, though, top five. Zach Rogers, Cody Lamas, Wolfgang Mason, Madison Sieber, and Jessica Shelton. Now Cody looking for the lead. Here he comes, trying to look to the inside on Zach Rogers. Wasn't able to quite get the run there out of the first corner. Here they come down to turn two. Rogers going to open up a little daylight, about a car length, car length and a half, between himself and Cody Lamas. Now we know that Wolfgang Mason was able to work his car well in turn three. 
We know Zach Rogers was able to work his car well in turn three. Let's see if Cody Lamas was able to learn anything from them. Can he make his car work in three? Not this time. Looks like he's going to stay content behind the 33, at least for the moment. Let's jump back here from fifth place on back. There is Shelton. James Qualls, sixth. Seventh, Zach Campbell. Daniel Day up there in eighth now with Lyndon Wright and Harrison Lankford now in the top ten. Where are our drivers that are running well in points, namely Sean Galligan and Luke Walker? There's Galligan in the 25th position and Luke Walker right behind him in 26th. I don't know if this would clinch them spots in the chase or not. They may have to pick up a couple more spots before this is all over, but I think right now they're just trying to stay out of trouble and not get wrecked. One driver that's not trying to stay out of trouble, though, he's trying to go for the win. That's Zach Rogers right now. Zach definitely making a case for himself to make this season's chase for the championship. As he could end up picking up his second win of the season. But he has not been able to shake off that Mobile One Toyota Camry of Cody Lamas. Two to go here at Pocono. Does Cody have anything for Zach Rogers, or has he used up everything he's got? Is he laying in wait? We don't know, but we're about to find out here in just a few moments. Wolfgang Mason doing his best to run these two down and make it a three-man fight for the win. As it still remains about a car length and a half here, heading into the second corner. Cody Lamas not making that much ground, but wait a minute, he got a little bit of a run that time. Here comes Cody! He got a good run there into turn two, and now he's coming to the inside into three. Can Cody Lamas clear Zach Rogers? Rogers, can he get through turn three and be able to hold off Cody Lamas? Here we go. Coming to the white flag. They are side by side. Coming to the white. Cody Lamas, Zach Rogers, almost dead even at the stripe as the white flag is displayed over both of their hoods. Wolfgang Mason now waiting in the wings for an opportunity. This could bring Madison Seaver and Jessica Shelton into the picture as well, as Cody Lamas has cleared Zach Rogers for the lead. Rogers back to second, now Wolfgang's all over him for that position. Cody Lamas makes the pass here, coming down to the white flag. Can Zach Rogers now make the bypass on the 77? If he does, it'll probably be in three. Here he comes! He's trying to get to the inside! Cody throwing the block! Zach's right on his back bumper though! Can Zach Rogers make a move here in the final corner? He's going to probably try and dive it down. Cody will try and block. Zach Rogers tried to get out of the throttle a little bit earlier. I don't think he was able to do it, though. Cody Lamas is going to hold him off. Cody Lamas with a last lap pass is going to pick up the win here in the Cove Haven Resort 350. He wins here today at Pocono, his second win of the season. Zach Rogers so close, but I don't think he'll be disappointed with second. That may have clinched him a spot in this season's Mobile Cup Series chase for the championship. And maybe, just maybe, Cody Lamas may have clinched himself a spot in this season's chase. Came in 12th in points as his second win of the season. That could have either moved him inside the top 10 in points or put him in potential running for a wild card position. And it's the fourth win of the season for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Now he and his teammate Drew Austin are two-time winners this season. What a race, and Cody Lamas timed it perfectly. I don't know if Zach Rogers had anything for him there in three or not. He was not really able to get his car to roll through the center of the corner like he did a few laps before when he bypassed Jessica Shelton for position, but man, what a great race. And Cody Lamas comes away with his second win of the season. Toyota's actually gone to victory lane quite a bit this season, twice with Sean Galligan. So I'm looking further down here, once with James Qualls, now twice with Cody Lamas, and then twice, of course, with Drew Austin. So Toyota's actually done really well this season in Mobile Cup Series competition. Wolfgang Mason's come to come away with third place. Good run for him. Fourth place, Madison Sieber. That'll keep her in the top ten. Jessica Shelton, very good run for her as she started on the outside of the front row. Comes away with a solid top five. Zach Campbell, good run for him. 41st in points. Man, he needed a run like that. Kyle Matthews, 7th place here today. Good run for him, too, as he comes into this race uh, 36th in points, so he really needed a good run to be able to boost the morale of that team. James Qualls, he is probably going to stay inside the top 10 in points now with a solid run of 8th. Ninth place was Daniel Day and Sean Henley, another driver who really needed a good run today, 35th in points. Good solid run for that 20th racing Chevrolet. We'll see where everybody else finished this race. 
as far as the uh, top 10 in points. Dylan Schwallenberg, 13th today. That may move him back inside the top 10 in points. Don't know for certain. Bob Jones, 6th in points, finishes the evening, or not the evening, but the day, in 19th place. James Silverfox, 9th in points, finishes 21st. Uh, Sean Galligan and Luke Walker, they both finished in 24th and 25th here today. Don't know if that's going to be good enough to get them into the chase for the championship. I think it will be, though. I'm pretty certain. We'll find out when we see our official standings. But at least they survived today's race. That's, I guess, the important part. Cassandra Renzi was up there for a while, finishes 27th here today. She came in 5th in the standings. Looking further down, Ian Dutta. Very poor run for him. Yeah, he had that slow pit stop, I remember, under the green flag run. That must have really cost him. He finishes 30th here today after starting on the pole. As we look further down here, you can find Austin the plant in the 38th position. The defending Mobile Cup Series champ, fourth in points. This is not the run he needed. Chris Washer also not exactly the best of runs for him as he finishes in 39th here today. And he came into this race seventh in the current standings. And then take a look down there. Henry Nova, poor run for the 32 here today. And Anthony McCurry and Dylan Young apparently never were able to really recover after McCurry and Dylan Young both spun out under our first caution of the day, but the winner of this race is Cody Lamas, his second win of the season, his first since Las Vegas, which was race number three, so it's been 15 races, no, 16 races, since Cody Lamas went back to victory lane, and he does it here today. So it could be possible that Sean Galligan, Luke Walker, and Zach Rogers have all clinched themselves spots already in the season's Mobile Cup Series chase for the championship. If they had, you'll see that in the standings that will be coming up at the end of this video. But hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. Pocono, as always, proving to be a point shaker. And with next week being the chase for the championship race, when the field will be locked to be able to battle it out for the championship, you can bet it's certainly going to be a wild one as to what Pocono may have done according to the standings heading into next week's event. But we'll see you guys next time. If you enjoyed this race, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and come part of the crew today. Here comes your official official results. Overall points and some points heading into next week's event at Kansas Motor Speedway. We still got a Snickers Cup Series event to finish off here this race weekend. Hope you'll tune in for that. As you've been watching production of the NCAA, off and racing at its best.